time of x. So we set up a chart. We can organize our uh, critical points and the intervals which the f prime of x is change in size. So we have critical points x equals 1, x equals negative 3. The smallest one, x less than negative 3, then x equals negative 3, x greater than negative 3, but less than 1, x equals to 1, then x greater than 1. Those are the interval I want to determine the signs of a prime of x. First of all, <clears throat> we got these critical points by setting a prime of x equals 0. We know these are already 0. I like to find the function values at these you know, critical points so it will help us sketch the graph. If I find f, f of negative 32 f of negative 3 equals 32, and f of 1 equals 0. So we put the 32 here and 0 here. We have two points already on the graph. Next thing is we want to determine the sign of the f prime of x in this interval. Uh, you, you notice that I put the f prime of x in a factor form so I can decide the signs very convenient way. If I pick, uh, for example, negative 4 for test point, this factor will be negative, this factor will be negative, product of those will be positive. Then on this interval, if I pick the um, test point 0, this factor will give negative, this factor positive, their product is negative. Finally, on the interval from 1 to infinity, this factor will be positive, this factor will be positive, their product is positive. Now I can begin make some conclusions from this information. If a prime is positive, function is increasing on this interval. In the interval from negative infinity to negative 3, function is increasing. On this interval from negative 3 to 1, function is decreasing. Since the f prime is negative, function is decreasing. Here is f prime is increasing, function is increasing. f prime is positive, function is increasing. Now I can apply the first derivative test, finally. This is the critical point, x equals negative 3. As we go through this, we see that in some open interval around negative 3, a prime is uh, positive just before that and negative after that. So that's an indication of we have relative maximum, relative max at this uh, critical point. Finally, at the uh, critical point 1, just before 1, we have negative slope, and after we have positive slope. And the second part of the first derivative test says we have a relative minimum. This is a one complete example of determining uh, first derivative test through the four steps. Uh, what I like to do is sketch the whole situation in a diagram. To do the best graph, we need a second derivative test, but the, at this point, we're just going to do the as much as possible from this information to sketch the graph. If you notice here, I, I put the y y value is very compact and the uh, horizontal axis the reasons numbers in this function. Now, off the bat, we know f of negative 3 is 32. Negative 3, 32 is somewhere here. We already know two points. And f of 1 equals 0, this is another point there. We also know at negative 3 we have a relative maximum. That means function is peak in here, something like that. 
at uh, one comma zero, we have a relative minimum function is doing this type of behavior. Now, if we look at that chart, uh, function is increasing before negative three, and then function is decreasing from negative three to one, I don't exactly know where this graph is going through. I'm just sketching. After one function is increasing all the way through. This is one example of the first derivative test. And as you notice, we apply this four step procedure for first derivative test. Find a prime of x. Step two is find the critical numbers. Then we determine the size in the chart form, then we apply the first derivative test. Thank you.